a controversial religious group comes to Boston. For us, it's, the church is where we live. But when they raise their voices to God, <laughs> tensions rise too. It's not just prayer, it's, it's a shouting, it's clapping, it's screaming. Ashmon Hill in Dorchester. People who live here say that this is the way city living should be. You have all the benefits of, of an urban neighborhood. Hello. All right. With much uh, of the suburban benefits also. Ashmont Hill is maybe the model neighborhood of the future. Dorchester's Ashmont Hill is one of the most diverse neighborhoods in the entire city. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, straight, gay, people of all cultures are found here living side by side peacefully. Well, peaceful until Friday evening at 6 p.m. That's when music, dancing, and the grill is fired up on Alban Street in Ashmont Hill. A neighborhood block party? No. It's a religious Sabbath celebration. These people are members of a religious sect called the Twelve Tribes. Followers live communally and are devoted, they say, to serving God day and night. Give us a little bit of vision. A little bit of vision as to why we're here and uh, <coughs> why we do everything we do. We see ourselves as um, clans in one of the tribes. We consider New England where the tribe of Judah is. In a spiritual sense, we see ourselves as a spiritual Israel. Though they follow some of the customs of the Jewish tradition, member Rakam Carlin says their belief system does not fit into Jewish or Christian religion. We hope to be what was in the Savior's heart and what was in the Apostle's heart about uh, a people of God who see who God is and as a consequence give Him everything, their whole lives, their possessions, all of their time and devote themselves to his purpose. Branches of the 12 tribes, sometimes called the community, can be found elsewhere in Vermont, New Hampshire, Canada, and Europe. The men of this branch in Dorchester leave their home each day to work at businesses that are owned by the community. Among them, the restaurant Common Ground, located in Dorchester's Lower Mills. As for the women, their job is to stay home, educating, nurturing, and teaching God's way to their children. The group presently live in four homes in the neighborhood. They recently added a fifth, this property on Melville Avenue. I don't think that we necessarily begrudge the fact that the community bought it because they are doing a great job rehabbing it. But there is some concern over the fact that uh, it, it's perceived that it was a behind the scenes deal. But it's their home here on Alban Street that has a budding neighbors up in arms. Joe Levine, a 10-year resident, says that relations with the community have taken a turn for the uh, worse. About three years ago, the man who was the local leader of the group left. They started doing a combination prayer service and aerobics at 5.30 in the morning outdoors in the tent on a daily basis. Uh, they started having their Friday night celebrations outdoors there on a daily basis. It's not just prayer. It's, it's a shouting, it's clapping, it's screaming, um, dancing. When they're dancing outside there, I have to blast my TV in order to block out and close the windows. We're not offended by the noise. Andrea and Gary Barsomian Dietrich also live next door to the yes, community. They're nonviolent, they're very friendly, they have wonderful children, they're helpful, they're, they have a good community spirit. But on the matter of children, the 12 tribes has a controversial past. Back in 1984, the community in Island Pond, Vermont, was the focus of national publicity. They were accused of child abuse. State police raided communal homes and took custody of 112 children. However, the charges were dropped and the children were returned to their families. We do discipline our children in accordance with the teaching to the scriptures, and it's borne wonderful fruit in their lives. Must have vision and understanding, you know? Another source of friction. Members of the community distributed anti-gay literature in Ashmont Hill and Melville Park. The literature called homosexuals, quote, the worst sinners imaginable. That greatly upset most of us in the neighborhood, uh, greatly upset us, um, because there's a sense in which it's a live and let live attitude here. And 
they are granted their, their freedom of religion and expression, and, and we're very tolerant of that, we would like them to be equally tolerant of different lifestyles that are represented in this neighborhood. And of course, there's still the issue that is at the heart of the matter, the noise from a residential property. There is some sort of zoning issue about a church being in a residential area. But for us, a church isn't an institution that's visited once a week on Sunday morning. For us, the church is where we live. The city's inspectional services division is now deciding the issue. All that we're trying to do is to reach some agreement by which they can do what they want to do and we can live the way we want to live. We've been insensitive to our neighbors and so we're talking about those ways uh, hopefully to be more sensitive and to mollify their concerns. More sensitive meaning what, Mary? Mm. Compromise coming? Compromise perhaps? coming. Um, the sect uh, is a compromise for abutting neighbors on Auburn Street is going to end the Friday night Sabbath an hour and a half earlier, hoping that that will help the noise level. Meanwhile, the city is still looking into zoning regulations to see whether, in fact, church services are a valid use of the home in a residential district. That decision is expected to come next month. Okay. When we come back, the newest.